Hello everyone. Um, welcome to the lecture 13. In lecture 13, the basics of preloading will be discussed. The learning objectives of this lecture are to review the consolidation concept and the relevant properties. The second is to describe the purposes of the preloading and the application of vertical trains. And the last is to describe the procedure to design the surcharge loading and the loading period. And uh, the contents of this lecture correspond to, you can find in details in the, uh, the chapter 11 in the textbook. Um, so the preloading or pre-compression is typically applied when dewatering is not feasible, particularly in the clay soil or city soil. But because the, because the clay soils and city soils are highly compressible, Consolidation settlement occurs uh, all the time, so we have to be we have to be able to uh, estimate the consolidation settlement during this preloading or pre-compression. So let's review the basics of the consolidation theory. So um, I presume that you've taken the soil mechanics one in the undergraduate. Um, so the the basic theory of one-dimensional is consolidation theory has been covered in the pre uh, pre courses, but uh, so that's why we're gonna just briefly review the just core concepts in, in here in this lecture. So pre-consolidation stress is the maximum vertical effective stress that the soil has ever experienced before. And sigma P prime or PC prime, we use this symbol to denote the pre-consolidation stress. And so when you plot the stress and void ratio curve, so here is the y-axis is the void ratio, and the x-axis is the vertical effective stress in logarithmic scale. And then the curve will look like this, which is for the bilinear curve, so idealized. Then the deflection point here. So I can use the pink color, and this is called the pre-consolidation stress. So when the stress is less than the pre-consolidation stress, the soil is OC, overly consolidated, and when the current vertical effective stress is the same with the pre-consolidation stress or higher than that, then it's called the normally consolidated state. And the compression index and the recompression index indicates the slope of these two curve, two line. So in this OC region, the slope is called the recompression index. And here in NC region, the slope is for this compression index. As you can see, the slope in this normal consolidated region is much larger than the CR. So CC is typically much larger than the CR. And the uh, degree of consolidation. So this, the void ratio versus the effective stress curve tells you that how much sediment will occur. So this uh, E log sigma V prime or E log P curve tells you the how much sediment will occur for a given effective stress increase in the clay layer. Then um, also the, the degree of consolidation can be used to describe the, uh, the how much consolidation has been accomplished or completed for a given time. So uz is determined or the defined as the one minus u over u naught. Here the u is the current excess pore pressure and the u naught is the initial excess pore pressure. So current when the current excess pore pressure becomes zero then the degree of consolidation becomes 100%. So this degree of consolidation is depend, dependent on the, the location of in the clay, within the clay layer and also the time. So I presume that you will remember this kind of isochron curve, which tells you the uh, consolidation ratio along the depth for a given time vector t and for a given depth. So for example, when the time factor is say that 0.3, 
then degree of consolidation over the clay layer uh, will distribute like this. So in the middle, it's about like 40%. And uh, in the like, quarter point here, which is about 65% or 67%. Right? So using this curve, you can estimate the uh, degree of consolidation along the depth for a given time of interest. And also there is a um, concept or the parameter for the average degree of consolidation. So then by integrating this curve along the depth, you can get the average number representing the degree of consolidation for whole clay layer. So that's called the uh, UABG or just capital U. And this capital U is also um, calculated using the settlement at time t over the ultimate consolidation as final. And uh, here, so an average degree of consolidation is function of time factor. So, and here the time factor is defined as this equation, Cv times t over hdr squared. And Cv is the coefficient of consolidation and t is the uh, time of interest. And hdr is the longest drainage path of the clay layer. So when you have double drained system, so you have a drainage layer at, at the top and bottom, then hdr will be the half of the thickness And if the drainage occurs at one in one direction, then the drain HDR will be the same with the, uh, the uh, clay thickness layer, clay layer thickness H naught. So um, when you compute this this time factor T, then you can calculate the uh, average degree of consolidation using this chart or using some equation. So you can see that as the time factor increases, the UAVZ also increases. So, and there's approximated equations for a given, uh, for, for the, uh, to calculate the average degree of con consolidation using the time factor T. We're gonna talk about it later in the, I guess in this lecture. Okay, uh, let's move on. So the preloading, what is preloading? Uh, preloading is the placement of temporary surcharge load on the ground prior to the construction of the proposed structure. So simply you place uh, some kind of a earth fill or just dump the soil and compact the soil and just pile the soil to add the additional weight on the soil to facilitate or the accelerate the, the consolidation settlement before you construct the actual building. So here the surcharge is normally also referred to as the earth fill. And this is most advantageous for uh, clay soil and the silty soil. So let's say that you don't, the case you don't apply the preloading. So without the preloading, You have a soft ground like this, and you're uh, building a structure on it. So then, because of the load transfer through this hello foundation, you have a sediment by delta H. If the sediment is too much, then you may need to use the pile foundation. So then, instead of the shallow foundation, you will install some piles to the bedrock. But with Preloading, when you apply the surcharge loading using some earth fill, then you're inducing, intentionally inducing some sediment by this much before you construct the real house or the actual structure. So because it's been settled by this much, so the ground surface will be located here. It's going to be uh, lowered a little bit. And then you can build the actual, uh, when you remove the, this surcharge loading or fill, then you 
uh, build the, the actual the proposed structure. But then once you have this the structure, because it's been settled this much, quite much, the relatively small settlement will occur only. So by this kind of a concept, the preloading will be conducted. So um, let's say that uh, the, without the preloading, the sediment curve, sediment occurs with time along this curve. So as time goes by, you have a sediment but uh, as much as S2. And with preloading, because it's been already settled, so the sediment will occur only by S1. So S1 will be much smaller than S2. So that's the purpose of the preloading. But the reaching the ultimate sediment, reaching the ultimate sediment with the preloading may take more time or the longer time than the expected, than the project, project proposed time. So then you need to speed up the preloading or the, you need to speed up the sediment. So then to speed up the sediment, vertical drains are used. Uh, the concept or the basic principle is that you install some drainage paths, which is made of sand drains or it can be just paper weak or some geotextile. Um, so before the own water only flow through the top and bottom, right, to the vertical direction. But as soon as you install this sand drain, the vertical drains, then the water can also drain to horizontal direction and going to the, uh, the upper and bottom, the lower layer. So this sand drain in this uh, radial floor into the drain. And this speed up the sediment and because it, it squeezes the water much faster. So when you compare the uh, sediment curve against the time, without the drains, it's gonna be like this as a reference, but as soon as you apply some or install some drains, then it's gonna be speed up. So it will be more fast, the, the sediment will occur at the faster rate, like this. So T2, let's say that uh, without drain, the sediment occurs over like one to two years of the time frame. Um, with the drains, the consolidation will occur within like three months. So that's the, uh, the goal of this installation of vertical drains. Um, but you should be noted that the ultimate sediments are the same. So the vertical drains, it doesn't um, prevent the sediment or it doesn't uh, increase the sediment. It only affects the rate of the sediment, so the speed of the sediment. Um, let's talk about the preloading theory. Um, so in this case, we're gonna, in this class, in this lecture, we'll talk about the preloading theory without the vertical drains. In lecture 14, we'll talk about the preloading with the vertical trains. So without the vertical trains, let's assume that we have uh, this kind of a soft clay with the thickness of HC, and at the middle, you have an effective stress of P0. The vertical effective stress is P0. And this soft clay has an initial void ratio of E0. Um, so later on, the load from, so the photo structure so the proposed structure will cause the uh, effective stress increase by delta P sub P here, okay. delta P sub P. And uh, the surcharge loading will be um, this much. So typically, that the so surcharge loading, you apply surcharge loading larger than the, uh, the permanent structure loading. So here, delta P sub P plus delta P sub F 
will be the total surcharge loading. So uh, let's say that you have an earth fill by this much and this increased effective stress at the midpoint by delta P sub P plus F. So then the pressure or the effective stress at location here will be this much by delta PF plus delta PP. And when, when you remove the surcharge loading and now that um, it's time to build a real structure, then only the delta PP will remain. So then how can we determine this, the time that we remove this uh, surcharge loading? and start to building the, uh, the real structure. And this timing is called the T2. And determination of the T2 is the, uh, the very important problem in the design process. Or if you have the limited T2, so already the, uh, the time that you have to build the structure is given. So let's say that this constructor said that you have only like three years to build this structure. So then you have only two years for surcharge loading. Okay. So then two years will be the T2. And then for the for this given T2 or two year term, how much load of by this earth field should be applied to accelerate the uh, the sediment? Okay. That will be the uh, the important question to answer when you design the surcharge and the preloading. So then um, you can draw some sediment curve over time. So SP will be the ultimate sediment by permanent weight. So this sediment will occur and ultimately you will reach some SP. And the second curve is the uh, ultimate sediment, tells you the ultimate sediment by the surcharge loading. So SP plus SF. So procedure is to plot the sediment curves for permanent load and the permanent load plus field load. So that's the surcharge loading and locate the time at which the SP plus F passes the SP. So here in this case, SP is here. So then the intersection that uh, this S sub P plus F surpasses or exceeds the SP is the point that point of the uh, time at which the, the surcharge loading is removed. So then using this T2, you can uh, project to the stress and stress versus time curve. Right? And also you can get some degree of consolidation, etc. etc. So when the clay is normally consolidated, ultimate sediment due to delta P sub P can be determined or computed by using this equation, right? SP is CCHC and 1 plus E naught log P naught plus delta PP over P naught. So here you can see that I think I hope you remember this equation. And CC is the compression index of the clay, and HC is the, whole, the thickness of the whole clay layer and E0 is the voids ratio of clay layer, so the initial voids ratio, E0. And the P0 is the uh, initial effective stress before you place this earth fill. And P0 plus delta PP is the, uh, the final effective stress after you construct the structure. So likewise, with the same manner, you can also estimate the ultimate sediment by the surcharge loading, delta PP plus delta PF. So S sub P plus F will be CC times HC over 1 plus E naught times log P naught plus delta PP plus delta PF over P naught. So here the difference will be uh, the increase in the loading increment or the stress increment. So note that SP will occur at the time T2 under the surcharge load. At this time, the, if the surcharge is removed, a structure with delta P is built, so no appreciable sediment will occur. 
Then under the surcharge of delta P at plus delta PP, the degree of consolidation at time T2 can be determined using this. So here the uh, U sub P plus F is the average degree of consolidation. And so the, um, say here, if the SP is about like one meter and SPF is about like two meter, then when the SP occurs for a given surcharge loading by this much, then uh, one over two, so 0.5 will be the average degree of consolidation, so 50%. So that means that you can say that the consolidation has completed by 50%. And if you submit a substitute to SP and SP plus F using this equation one and two, then you can eliminate the, all these constants and only the left, the log is left, right? So then you can simplify the equation into this form. Right? So one plus delta PP over P naught over log 1 plus delta pp over p naught times 1 plus delta pf over delta pp. So then if you look at this equation carefully, then there are two parameters, delta pp over p naught, so which is the, um, the stress by this structure, permanent structure over the initial effective stress. So the ratio between the, uh, the structural stress and to the initial effective stress. And the second term, so this is also, you can find the same term here. And the second parameter is the delta PF over delta PP. So this is the uh, an additional surcharge field loading over the permanent structural loading. So this average degree of consolidation can be related to delta PP over P naught and delta P F over P P. So in the um, handout, in figure three, using this curve, using this equation, you can plot the chart. You can plot the chart um, of degree of consolidation versus this parameter and this parameter. So here you can see that um, access is the uh, ratio of surcharge to the permanent load. So delta PF over delta PP. And Y axis is the required consolidation ratio under structural load UF plus P. So it's, this here is 30% and here is 100%. And you can plot the several curve as you vary the value of ratio of delta PP over P naught. So here 10 to the 0.1 is given. So using this curve, if you know, when you know the, all the structural load and the surcharge field load and the initial effective stress, if you know the P naught and delta PP and delta PF, then you can determine the required degree of consolidation to for this preloading design. Okay. And you can see that um, as delta PF, as the surcharge fill or surcharge loading increases, the required degree of consolidation decreases. So from here, 100 to 30%, as you go to this direction, so the, the U degree of consolidation decreases. And as the delta P increases, which means that uh, in relation in relatively to the in relative to the initial effective stress, as the structural load is larger, then required degree of consolidation also increases. So 
So that's the observation that you can make um, in this graph. And from the degree of consolidation, you can determine the T2 value using this time factor. So in the vertical uh, one-dimensional consolidation system, time factor T is CV times T over HDR squared. So once you know the average degree of consolidation, you can get the time factor using the this, using some equation or using this this kind of chart. Um, t time factor can be so if you use the average degree of, of consolidation using this chart, once you know the UAVG, then you can compute the time factor t. And then, so then you can ca calculate the T2 using this equation. But, um, the important concept here is that, let's say that the required degree of consolidation is 50%. So then, 50% degree of consolidation or the consolidation ratio U is here. And, uh, the UZ over the depths will be like this. And you can see that in the central part is under consolidated. So still, the degree of consolidation here is less than 50%. And at the top and at the bottom near the boundary is over consolidated. So if you remove the surcharge you load, and when you uh, place the permanent loading by the structure, still the, at, the center, at the center part, there will be some consolidation sediment continues. So you don't want to have that. So the, what people do is that instead of using average degree of consolidation to determine the time factor and T2, you can just use the uh, degree of consolidation at the center at the depth factor of uh, 1. So this gives you the very conservative design value for the time factor T2. Um, th so degree of consolidation varies with depth. So then which depth should we look at? Answer for this is that we're going to look at the um, the location of the depth factor of one, or simply you can see that at the center for the double drain system. So use the one and use the and don't use UAVG. So by using this uh, UZ, the degree of consolidation at the center, um, you will have a little bit more conservative value um, to be safe. Eh? And this has been described in this Handout. So if you read the handout in detail, so this is the handout for the pre-compression pre design, it will describe more details about how to determine the uh, surcharge load and the uh, time factor T. So the typical procedure for um, the preloading design in normally consolidated clay is like this. So first, if the, the value of the delta P at, if the value of surcharge loading is known or given, then T2 should be determined, right? So the time that you remove the surcharge load and the, at the time that you begin to start, begin to um, build the real structure. For this problem, you estimate the P naught and delta PP first. And so for the um, degree of consolidation using equation four or the figure three in the handout, and estimate the time factor T from the um, degree of consolidation 
u and using figure 4. And from this, you can compute the time factor t2. I'm not so sorry, they are t2, the time from the time factor. In the second case, um, the time t2 at which that surcharge is removed is given. So then how much surcharge loading should be applied? So how much delta pf should be applied? So in this case, estimate the t time factor t using this t2, then estimate the degree of consolidation from the figure 4. So figure 4 is this one and solve the uh, delta pf over delta pp from the figure 3 here so once you know the degree of consolidation then you can find out the, uh, the value the pp and the pf or using some equations so um, And let's go back to the figure 4. Uh, here the figure 4 shows the, the consolidation ratio in the x-axis. So it's been uh, drawn to the uh, um, logarithmic scale. And x-axis is the time factor t, v. And here there are several lines for a different depth factor. And when you look at the curve, this, the one at the uh, the very outside is corresponds to the death factor one, so at the center for the double drain system. Okay. And what about the over consolidated clay? So then the only difference is that you're gonna use different equation for uh, to estimate the, the sediment. So instead of using the equation, let's call it equation one. And equation one. Here. So instead of using the CC value, you can use maybe the you have to use the recompression index. So because that in E and log sigma V prime curve you have this kind of a bilinear curve so that if you have if you have a current effective stress at this point then you're gonna have to use the uh, CR depending on the uh, the final loading if the final effective stress is passing this here the current uh, pre-consolidation stress sigma p prime then you have to use both CR and the CC to estimate the sediment. So uh, just the only thing that you have to be careful is to uh, when you can't compute the sediment for a given delta pp plus delta pf or by this delta pp. And the other procedures are the same for the over consolidated clay. So in this lecture to wrap up We've seen the cons uh, we briefly reviewed the consolidation concept, and also we've seen the why the preloading is required or necessary, or the vertical drains are necessary, and we saw how to design the surcharge load and the loading period T two. Okay, that's all. I'll see you guys in lecture fourteen.